time for the uh, big show, and to introduce our speaker tonight, we have Miss Karen Jennigan, Ms. Karen Jennigan, excuse me, Karen. Thank you, Paul. Good evening. Um, my husband, John, and I have had the privilege of working with this gentleman who is going to be our speaker tonight, and we've been going up to... Uh, Salinas to work with the Pat Hathaway collection. It's been an honor and a privilege to do that. And so tonight our guest speaker is James Perry. He has a Master of Arts from, in Museum Studies with an emphasis on collection management and public history. He has served the Monterey County Historical Society in various capacities since 1990 and is currently the Executive Director. The group has its headquarters at the Baranda Adobe in North Salinas. Mr. Perry was born in Monterey County and was a personal friend of Pat Hathaway. His talk will include information about how Monterey County Historical Society came to acquire the collection and the future plans for it. Please welcome James Perry. going to introduce you to our campus briefly, and then I will uh, proceed to talk about Mr. Hathaway. Before I commence, may I have a show of hands of who actually been to the Monterey County Historical Society? Okay, very good, very good. This is Casa Baranda, which was built in 1844 by uh, Mr. Baranda, that's, of course, this was during the, uh, the twilight era of these, uh, the Mexican Republic period. This is the oldest home in the Salinas Valley, very heart of our campus. This gives you an overview of our five-acre campus, including our half-track memorial uh, dedicated to World War II, the 1897 Red Lagunito Schoolhouse that we saved from uh, being demolished here. I redid this interior in 2013 to reflect an authentic turn of the century interior. This would have been yet another casualty of lack of historical preservation in the city of Salinas. Uh, this home 
would have, uh, this home was actually designed by William Weeks, very prominent architect, which we're in the middle of restoring. And of course we have all of the amazing artifacts that go into it. And we're in the midst of developing heirloom botanical gardens to celebrate the history of uh, ethnobotany uh, in the region. My central garden fountain will be using exterior elements for these uh, for the heirloom botanical gardens, including this downspout from the original Hotel Caminos. Also, also another uh, project in the works is our museum that will be devoted to the first peoples of the region, 10,000 years of first peoples experience here in the valley. And we have one of the largest archeological collections uh, in the state, thanks to Gary Braschini and Trudy Haversat, who were the preeminent archeologists in the region for 40 years. It'll include a round reading room as well with the planetarium. Exterior exhibits also again focusing on the ethnobotany of the region. This is our future museum. Uh, 12,500 square feet we build as we can afford it given the fact that we are not our expenditures are not underwritten whatsoever by the county of Monterey presently serving as large artifact uh, storage this was from 1898 used by Emma Herson who was the first female physician in southern Monterey County other large specimens include this very fine commercial coffee mill from 1873, standing at six feet in height. This is vault number one. Our records date all the way back to 1770. In fact, I just finished a partnership with the California State Library California Reveal program, where they digitize 20,000 documents dating back from 1770 through 1850. For over two decades, it had been long my dream to make these, uh, all of these records available to the public, and they now are. But I'm also a, a custodian for the Superior Court, both civil and criminal divisions, keeping certain records, including the entire naturalization collection. So everyone who naturalized here from 1850 to 1978, they're all here. Other interesting specimens, if you can think of it, we have it, including this bottle of 1804 Napoleon brandy used by the Last Man's Club, but I'll talk to you about that on another evening. <laughs> This is vault number two, and this is where Mr. Hathaway's collection is residing now. This was uh, the vault that I had built in 2016. And I had to add this, this is our dry fire suppression tank. We enjoy state-of-the-art dry fire suppression uh, in both facilities. And that actually figured prominently in the ultimate decision-making process when it came for the, uh, for the Historical Society to be the beneficiary of Mr. Hathaway's collection. So another project that I'm presently working on is a Victorian library reading room, which is immediately adjacent uh, to vault number one. And we are integrating interior architectural elements from a beautiful mansion torn down in 1965 in order to create, oh, essentially I want to time travel you back to the 1880s, and it's going to be a pure room, perfectly befitting of a collection such as what we have. One of these stained glass windows I had restored, 1905, this came from 216 Main Street in Salinas, created for the Grand Saloon. Now, I want to 
talk to you about Mr. Hathaway's collection. So upon his return in 1968, through his timely passing in January of 2020, Mr. Hathaway managed to uh, develop one of, or assemble one of California's largest privately held collections, including 80,000 glass plate negatives dating all the way back to the 1850s. Now, half of, uh, approximately 50% of this collection is, uh, chronicles the development of industry and commerce and daily life Monterey on the Monterey Peninsula. However, the other half of it comprises of imagery of our valley, uh, again, dating all the way back to the 1860s uh, through, again, the 20 teens. Uh, what's very, very interesting about his collection is that uh, he also managed to put together an amazing reference library and ephemeral materials. Paraiso Springs, circa 1890. Colton Hall, still with its limestone fascia. This collection documents many settlements that are no longer there. Many of you know the site now as Hopkins Marine Station, but prior to the fire of May of 1906, it was a China, Chinatown, and it had a thriving population of people. So as I was saying, the, the, other, uh, the other portion of Mr. Hathaway's collection comprises of imagery relating to our valley, but his collecting scope was far and wide in that he managed to acquire collections that chronicle such events as the Alaskan gold rush of the late 1900s, I mean late, late 1800s, the 1890s more specifically, to World Wars I, II, Vietnam, also chronicled events happening uh, in uh, the Hawaiian Islands and the Philippine Islands. And again, as I stated, he was also a collector of just a wealth of ephemeral specimens. <laughs> Materials, think of a newspaper, for example. Uh, so we read them today and line our, kitty, our, our, our little kitty litters tomorrow with them. So he saved the things that should not even exist. And his, his collection was responsible for, uh, for appearing in thousands of newspaper articles, uh, publications, uh, journals, scholarly works. So upon his return from Vietnam in 1968, Mr. Hathaway right away became the collector. But what I want people to remember, to, to also acknowledge him for as time goes on, is his own magnificent work as a photographer. Uh, 1968 through his passing, he was exceedingly prolific and conscientious of the fact that uh, the time period, he knew the time period that he was living in, things were changing things were evolving, and he wanted to chronicle Monterey at, and the peninsula as it changed. This is among one of his earliest images in 1968 upon his return. Cannery Row fires of the 60s and the 70s. Amazing notable events, such as the inaugural day opening of the Monterey Bay Aquarium in 1984. I remember that day very well. I, you, I was too small, you can't see me in the audience, but I was there. It was also, again, as a, as a photographer, his, uh, 
he, there were so many genres of photography that, that he was wonderful at. Portraiture, cityscapes, wildlife. Now, when he passed, he passed in testing without a will. And uh, it was a very arduous and long process, uh, the way that the collection ended up uh, with the Historical Society. There was discussion, uh, Mr. Hathaway had, had uh, voiced his some of his thoughts with the state administrator, Ken Seavey, whom I worked with very closely. Uh, there was the idea of the collection possibly going to Berkeley. Well, so part of the probate process was to fulfill the spirit of some of the wishes he may have had. So Mr. Hathaway went to Berkeley, and Berkeley him and hawed about it, and stated, well, we're not gonna take it unless you give us money. We want the collection and we want the money too. So that didn't happen. And then uh, Mr. Seavey went to Cal State University Monterey Bay and that didn't work out. The university was not at all interested in the collection. So I won't go into the politics of, of, of all of CSUMB as an alma mater of it, but anyway. So then uh, Kent uh, CB started looking around our county to find, in, in the hopes of finding a facility that would responsibly preserve and uh, curate and make available to the general public Mr. Hathaway's collection. So uh, the city of Monterey put in put in a bid for a proposal for it. Uh, and another institution, and it's not coming to my mind right now, put in a proposal for it. And then I did. So it was very important for me uh, to make sure that this collection would remain resident in our county. Uh, not, not what superseded my, my professional uh, responsibility as a curator and, and historian was my personal responsibility to make sure that his collection would stay here in our county. Uh, because it would have been very easy for the Getty to come up here and flash a whole bunch of money in front of the heirs uh, and then before we know it, the collection could have left our county. And I think that that would have haunted all of the historians in this region, in addition to making the collection, well, much less accessible. So uh, we were, based upon uh, the Historical Society's curatorial capabilities, our dry fire suppression systems, uh, security uh, and security systems, temperature and humidity control systems, we were, we were selected for the collection. That was the easy part. So, moving into the future, uh, you know, I, I had, just take you back more than two decades. I was cognizant of the fact, as were others, that uh, Mr. Hathaway had a lot in his mind, and he need, we were hoping that he would write it down, and several of us gently trying to inspire him to create finding aids, to curate his collection. And he did on one level, but on other levels he was intending to, but we ran out of time. And so I just, I wanna make you aware that, he, so there's several facets to Mr. Hathaway. There's Mr. Hathaway, the collector, of photographs, Mr. Hathaway, the collector of ephemera, putting together a library with approximately 2,000 volumes. But again, there's Mr. Hathaway, the photographer, who is exceedingly prolific, 
leaving behind approximately 450,000 images. And the gentleman was so busy preserving and curating on one level the historical collection, he did not spend the time to curate his own work. So another personal commitment I have is making sure that his career will be curated as well. So to that end, what, what will this entail? Well, I will be shortly entering into an open conversation with the California State Library, California Revealed program again, and see if they will indeed take this project on all or in some portion of it. Uh, I am also, I've also set up an endowment, a specific endowment uh, that I'll need to get to a certain amount in order to self-fund an image curator solely dedicated to the, uh, the photographic part of the collection. But in order for us to even get to that level as well, uh, the collection needs to be brought up to a certain standard, organized to a certain standard. And uh, we're making great strides thanks to John and Karen, whom I might add I'm in great, I'm uh, indebted to them both because the images that we're about to see here on the time travel, my little time travel journey I'm going to bring you on for South County, were all digitized by John and Karen. Now, let me take you on a little time travel journey. Let's, let me take you back 110 years. Here is Parkfield. You'll see the little Rodeo Arena created by cars parked in a circle, parked right next to them. This would be right after the Great War, right after World War I. Here we are in Mich at Mission San Miguel in 1923. Now I must note what's amazing about Mission San Miguel, a lot of people don't realize this, I'm certain many of you do though, the fact that it has some of the most well-preserved uh, imagery, uh, paintings from the Spanish colonial era. So of course this church was constructed in 18, 1797. Here is Bradley, San Arno Road. You'll note the damage to the, uh, to the trestle bridge. But this image was taken by Lou Hare, who was one of our county's finest uh, surveyors. He was the, our official surveyor for Monterey County. This was taken in June of 1911. That year, and 1914 were horrendous when it came to the floods. Caused a lot of damage, as you'll see in other images. Here's Mr. Hare uh, driving this very fine horseless carriage. So this is the Plato Bridge site, taken specifically October the 24th, 1918. San Ardo Radio's uh, uh, railroad station, circa 1900. Here we are. This is the San Ardo Bridge dedication, which occurred on April the 22nd, 1908. And this actually is quite wonderful. This, uh, Karen uh, included this, she, uh, and I love it, because this, this is a, uh, a newspaper article from the King City Rustler uh, that happened on uh, the 25th of April. This allows us to, this is a, a primary document that allows us to curate that image.
Here is San Lucas. Now, this is the uh, Tresconi Rancho with the Vaqueros, and also a Lou Hero uh, photo. Now, I'm fairly certain that the fortified gentleman right in the middle there, I think that that's Julius Tres Tresconi. This is from right around the year of 1900. Here we are at King City in 1909. You'll see uh, first at Broadway, looking west, you'll see the Hotel Camino Real and the Railroad Exchange Hotel. Primitive, muddy streets. And John and Karen have the exact uh, postcard, postmark 1908, so even though that's even though that states 09, it's the image is actually earlier than that. So that just gives you another idea of how images can be uh, further curated and dated. This wonderful image is of uh, that's King City, and it's the grammar school. It's at the the location of the current city hall at Vanderhurst and Bassett Street. Circa 1910. This is a great image right here. This, this is, it reads, beef for the King City Market. And then, of course, the, the little annotation written on it. What do you think of my cattle? So again, it would be very interesting to it, we can curate this image, it will take time, but you know, that, that's part of the journey in, in being a curator and historian, is delving deep. This is King City, the San Lorenzo Creek Bridge. This is the uh, uh, very, very interesting time period. Again, the storms and flooding of 1911. This is looking east past First Street. Now the railroad trestle in the background is still standing. King City, again, showing the Monterey County Bank. This is post, uh, postmarked uh, July 1929. Uh, what's interesting is that on the back of the image, it's marked King's City. So our original title for King City. And so of course it, it must be noted that this bank building was built right around the same time as, this, as the bank building in Gonzales. So 1917, 1918. <coughs> Here's the uh, yeah, street scene in King City. Postmarked March the 1st, 1938. This is Broadway near 3rd Street, looking east, with uh, the, uh, the Daily Store featured, and Freeman's ADH. This is circa right around 1938. Here is Metz, the Metz district. Reconstruction of the railway, uh, railroad bridge crossing Halone Creek, east of Greenfield. Postmarked March 1912. Now we are in Greenfield. This shows you the buyer building at El Camino Real and Oak Avenue. It's undated, but uh, I believe it to be 1938 to 1940. Yeah. It's written on the building uh, at the forefront is the year 1936. But So this was a fairly new building, I'm thinking right around 1938 to 1940.
very fascinating how images, uh, they memorialize events, good, bad, and indifferent. This is always very unusual, I love it. This is the Women's Christian Temperance Union picnic group shop, August 1914. What was the location of that? Outside of Greenfield. Yes. This is Harlem District. So this is the Southern Pacific Railroad siding washout between Metz and Soledad. And this was 1911. I love this image. This is quite wonderful. So this is the Soledad Salinas River Bridge, uh, Paraiso Springs Road. And you'll see the man on the buggy uh, with, the, uh, with the, ho the horse drawn buggy. course this was postmarked 1910. Now what you can see is right above this right above this gentleman there is a bridge and that would uh, warning you you would be imposed very heavy fines if you rode your buggy faster than one can walk. Now we're in Soledad. So this is a very interesting aerial uh, or water tank view. Looking east, you'll see the railroad tracks and the corrals circa 1910. This is the Soledad Southern Pacific Depot building, the railroad crossing sign and the windmill. Circa 1910. This is West Front Street in Soledad, showing the Froley Market and the Soledad Mercantile Company, circa 1940. This is the image I was talking to you about earlier, one of two of them that, that uh, Karen located in the collection. Fort Romy Soledad, up the Binsaka grade, horses pulling steam tractor. That's quite the production right there. So this, we, we asked, uh, the, the, we're still trying to research the specific album the history behind the album uh, that these images were located in. Uh, but we think it was uh, a gentleman who put it together was a gentleman named, uh, it was Myron Oliver's father, I forget, uh, Joseph Oliver, yes. So we're thinking maybe 1902, 1904, something like that. The Solid Admission. founded in 1791 from the same uh, scrapbook as the image of Binsaka Grade that I just showed you. This is one of the nicest street scenes of Gonzales, uh, Ford Street, that I have ever seen. Now, this is quite nice. Uh, this right here, uh, this is circa 1894, and so it's looking west. Uh, you have the IOOF Hall, the post office, Justice Court, and the Gonzales Tribune newspaper office. Gonzales, Alta Street, and Railroad, circa 1910. This is the Brockman House fire burning, 
Brockman House was located on 4th Street in Gonzales. And this happened, this event happened in February 1913. This is the old Alpine milk plant, Nestle's Alpine milk plant from uh, circa right around 1915. Here is the grammar school in Gonzales, built in 1898. This, this image was taken very shortly thereafter, probably around 1900. And here we are in, uh, well, the image is postmarked 1949, and it certainly looks uh, definitely late 40s, all of, those, uh, all of those vehicles are. This is 4th and Alta Street, showing Frank's Market, the Monterey County Bank. And again, this building was built right around the same time, 1917, 1918, as the one in King City. Was built. This image right here is shortly after the war, probably, probably 1948, maybe 1950. Gonzales 4th Street, showing the Ben Franklin store. Travel a little bit, a little bit more up the valley. Here we are in Chular. Here's the railroad station, postmarked 1907. Here is the Chular Grammar School. Circa right, circa 1908. Our hardware store, which was Anderson Beck and Company, circa 1900. This this concern was was quite the place in its day. Uh, the, another hardware store uh, owned by uh, Anna Bolitsen. So this building was, was built around 1898. I estimate this image to be 1905, 1910. And it's interesting to note that the Historical Society actually has Mr. Anna Bolison's ledgers from that exact same time period. Chular Church. Note the windmill. This was postmarked in December 1911. And now we're in Spreckles. So this was postmarked 1911, and the photographer, last name was Butler, very, very interesting fellow. He was only in our valley for about 12 years, decided to relocate, and enjoy a very successful career on as an actor on stage. But while he was here, he was able to visually document uh, all that was going on. And during the time that he was here, a lot of things were changing. So my hat's off to him for what he was able to chronicle. Here we are, Spreckle Sugar Factory. You know, the railroad tracks. This was postmarked June 1907. This is a wonderful, wonderful view of the boulevard, Spreckles, 1908. So this is the destruction to the Spreckles Bridge. So this either would have been 1911 or 1914. 
but you can see the power of nature. Paraiso Springs, one of our finest venues, I think, during the Victorian age and early 20th century, well, even up until the 60s and the 70s. A lot of people have a lot of fond memories about it. This image is from 1910. And here's the pool, circa 1910. This is a very fascinating image taken in 1913. Um, threshing wheat at uh, the Goulds Ranch outside of Arroyo Seco. I wanted to show you the image of the Bensaka Agrade again, because again, it, you can see the handwriting on both of them. So we had someone that was putting together this album, and one of the things I'm hoping is as I continue to, as we continue through uh, to research Mr. Hathaway's collection, we're looking for provenance, paperwork, et cetera, et cetera, that allow us to further curate the specimen. Here is Guinevere's Castle in the Pinnacles, circa 1920. Moses Spring at the Pinnacles, circa 1920. Here is the Holon Grade, circa 1905, 1910. Now, here's Mr. Hare driving a, few, a couple of ladies around. Uh, this would have been, uh, so he's at the summit of Quinado Pass, so very close to us. This image is postmarked October 1908. And what's interesting is on the reverse side of the image, there reads King's Holon Road. So again, this was the time period where we were transitioning from the city of King or King's City to King City. This is J. Maxfield's General Blacksmith Smithing Store in Halon, postmarked April 1909. This is a wonderful image of a home in Halon in the snow, postmarked February the 26th, 1911. This is a very fascinating image in itself. This is called the Milpitas Ranch Flume. This is circa 1910. And you have uh, one of Lou Hare's workers in the background. Now, what's, what I'd like to note about this particular image is that this particular flume design was inspired by the aqueduct system here at Mission San Antonio. Oh, uh, this one right here? Mil Milpitas, this is the, known as the Milpitas Ranch Flume. Oh yes. This is from the same scrapbook as the uh, couple of the other images, including the one of Bensaka Gray, the Grace, oh, the Gray scrapbook, which happens to be right here on the table. So uh, this, is, this is our mission here in 
right around the year, we're thinking 1902. And what's fascinating to note is that in 1915, most of, most of the roof tiles were, were taken away and they were actually utilized in some fashion at the Pan Pacific Exposition in San Francisco in 1915, thus hastening the destruction of, of, the, of our mission here. Here is Lucia on the Roosevelt Highway, which eventually became called Highway 1, circa 1930. And here is Hearst Castle, 1930. All of you are well aware that here we are in one of the finest Designed buildings of its kind, I think. We were very fortunate to have, uh, very, very fortunate to have Julia Morgan here in California. And so, with that, I've taken you on a wonderful tour of Southern County. And what I, what I would like to leave you with before I open it up to questions. Is, is the fact that history history needs history needs us all and we are all part of history it might be the present now but tomorrow will be history and it's all we can do but our very best to work together various different historical institutions to work together to garner volunteers to garner the moral support in order to preserve the history that we have now. Many of these events here, if, if you go back into your family history, many of these events, you'll, you could very well remember stories. Stories from your grandparents or your great-grandparents or your parents. It's time to write them down. If it's one thing, you know, Mr. Hathaway was so dear to me, had he written it down, just 10% of what he had we all would have been better off for it. But we're still in an era to where I can take half of you at, at the very least, and if I have questions about images re you know, relating to South County or Monterey County, you would know. I'm very good when it comes to certain things, but I certainly don't know it all, and I'll be the first to tell you all of that. That's why we need each other, and we need each other for the purposes of historical preservation, because it's all about what we leave behind. Anyway, so with that, I will open it up to questions.